Welcome to Kids Town Live. I'm Baker Becky, the Children's Ministry Director at Covenant Community Church in Vacaville, California. And I'm Sue Chef Joey. Let's see if I remember what we have learned. The Book of Judges covers about 250 years of Israel's history. Yes. Okay, so Joey, when you're at school and the teacher leaves the classroom for a second, do the kids in the class act their very best or not so much? Not so much. They get noisy, throw things, get up and run around. I, I guess that's what the people of Israel were like in the book of Judges. Exactly. So there's no teacher in the classroom and the children of Israel get a little mischievous for about 250 years. Who are the judges? Okay, so remember from last week, their funny names, Othniel, Ehud, Shamgar, Deborah, Gideon, Tola, Jair, Jephthah, Ibzon, Elon, Abdon, and Samson, the most famous. He was strong. Yeah, and then the cycle began. First, the Israelites would forget all about God and start worshiping the fake gods of their neighbors. Then God would take away his protection and blessings over Israel just like he promised way back in Deuteronomy. And then a neighboring king would come in and take over Israel and make their lives miserable. And in their misery, the children of Israel would call out to God to, for help. God would answer. He would raise up a judge who would drive out the enemy and free the Israelites once again. The Israelites would celebrate how God had saved them but then they'd get lazy and go right back to worshiping the gods of their, the fake gods of their neighbors. And the whole thing would start over again. The book of Judges is a miserable book. Yes, the children of Israel forgot God over and over and over. And they do some really terrible things. And it's so sad. Well, that's the end of the book of Judges. What's next? So that brings us to the eighth book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Ooh. Ruth is a tiny little book that's easy to read, and it tells just one story. The story of a woman named Gladys. <laughs> uh, or the story of a woman named Ruth. The story of Ruth is a great romance story of the Bible. Ew, is there kissing? They don't mention any kissing, but it is a great, great story. A great, great story needs to be told in a great, great way. Hmm, how about a popsicle stick theater? Or a straw puppet theater? I couldn't find any popsicle sticks. Okay, that'll work. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Ruth. She wasn't an Israelite, she was from Moab, a country Israel didn't like very much. But Ruth, she was married to an Israelite. Our story begins, Ruth, her Israelite husband, and her husband's mother were living in Moab because there was a famine in Israel. A famine? You mean no food? Mm -hmm. Right, no food. So they're in Moab when, oh no, Ruth's husband dies. I don't know what happened. Maybe he got hit by a bus. Um, I don't think they had buses back then. Or maybe he got hit by a cow. <laughs> Joey? Or a goat? Uh, Joey. An ill-tempered iguana. Joey! Anyway, he's dead, he's gone, no more husband. Now, Ruth's mother-in-law, her name is Naomi. She doesn't have a husband either. He died a while back. Probably another iguana. Joey. Naomi doesn't really belong in Moab. She's an Israelite. Soon, so as soon as the famine ends, she decides to go back to Israel. Of course, she is old and has no husband and no money, so she will have to beg for food. Her life will be sad. Well, guess what? Ruth doesn't want that to happen. She loves Naomi. So even though Moab is her home, Ruth says to Naomi, I will come with you. 
Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, this amazing Ruth, she leaves her home and goes to Israel with Naomi to take care of her. Every day, she follows the workers in the field to pick up little bits of grain to share with Naomi. She's picking up bits of grain field that belongs to a wealthy na man named Boaz, who happens to be related to Naomi's old husband, the one that dies in the iguana accident. I don't think he was killed by an iguana. Whatever. So, Boaz sees Ruth in the field and hears about what she's done for Naomi. He hears about her great love for her mother-in-law and get this, he falls in love with Ruth. Wonderful Ruth. And Ruth and Boaz end up getting married. And Boaz takes care of Ruth and Naomi, her mother-in-law. And everyone is happy. Yes, but what's the point? What do you mean, what's the point? Why is the book of Ruth in the Bible? It's a nice story, but what's it have to do with God's rescue plan? Oh, that is a good question. Um, you know, we can actually learn a lot from the book of Ruth. There are two big reasons it's in the Bible. First of all, it is an example of redemption. Redemption? You mean to save someone by paying their debt? Exactly. So Ruth and Naomi were poor and homeless, and Boaz wanted to help them. But to do that, they, he had to buy the land that used to belong to Naomi and her husband. And once he had bought back the land or redeemed it, he could marry Ruth and then take care of Naomi. Boaz was their redeemer. Oh, I get it. It is an example of redemption. So what is the other reason that Ruth is in the Bible? Well, so, you know, the book of Judges told us that Israel uh, needed a king, a godly king who would follow God's laws. And the big question is, where will they find such a king? Is there a godly family that can produce a godly king? So, so look at this. Okay, Ruth and Boaz, here they are. Ruth and Boaz get married. Then they have a son named Obed. And Obed has a son named Jesse. And Jesse had a son named David. And David is that king, the godly king Israel has been waiting for. Oh, so the book of Ruth tells us the beginning of the godly family that would give Israel its godly king. And that's why it's in the Bible. So Ruth is a great book. Ruth is faithful to her mother-in-law and she leaves her own community to join Naomi's. So for our craft today, it's I'll show you what we're doing, um, but you're gonna need um, four little strips of paper. So two strips from one color and two strips from another. My pieces of paper are about one centimeter thick by about 15 centimeters long. You can make yours whatever thickness and length you would like. Okay, so you've got your four, your four strips of paper and you're gonna need a glue stick. And you're gonna take your first color so I'm going to start with yellow and you're going to glue them into a right angle. So let me zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. Just like that. Okay. Okay. So then you're going to glue your two strips of your other color over the top. Once you have them glued just like this, now we're going to start folding. So we're going to fold our first color, which is the yellow, over the top, just like that. And we're going to fold our next yellow over, and 
keep folding until you've completed that. to the end, we're going to glue down the last little bit. The paper that we just made, Ruth joined her life with Naomi and with God. So who is your life joined to? The unity of the braid makes the paper strips much stronger than they were separately. This is very similar to what happens to our lives when we join with others and with God. All right, guys, we're gonna close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for your amazing book. Thank you for the story of Ruth and Naomi. Help us grow closer to others and to you. We love you. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Next week, I believe, we're starting the book of Samuel. First Ooh. Samuel. All right. Bye. Bye.